Where's Cassie? She said the uh, last call we had that she was moving on with Alex. Yeah, it seems to be going OK. Oh, good. He's a nice bloke, Yeah. I've been thinking when I get uh, released for here, I'm not going to come back to Shetland. Why's that? Oh, come on, Jimmy. There's plenty of things I'm like Donna Kellogg off the hook. You can eat that toffee crisp, because if you're not, I'm going to have it. These are like go million in here. What time's the tribunal? Two. Don't feel bad about the suspension. I've been fine. And if nothing else, it gave me time to spend with my dad before he died. Wish I could have made the funeral. Can he be helped? What are you going to do if you can't be a cop? I haven't really thought about it. That's a big lie. You've thought about nothing but that. This committee has been instructed to review the findings of the Police Investigation and Reviews Commissioner into the death of Donna Killick. We must decide whether a charge of misconduct holds. Is there anything you would like to add in your defence before we reach our decision? I'm a police officer. It's the only thing I've ever done. It's the only thing I ever wanted to do. And I really don't want to jeopardise my chances of being cleared here today. But I have to say this. Donna Killick was dying, and she wanted to punish people. In particular, Duncan Hunter and me. Now, she manipulated Duncan Hunter into committing a crime. And then she tried to ruin my career through false accusations. And with all due respect, that was self-evident to anyone who actually knew her. The fact that I'm sitting here today is a, is a victory for her. No one else. We had no choice but to ask why Donna Killick made those accusations, and you know that very well. We will now retire, weigh up the evidence, and reach our findings. We'll let you know our decision shortly. Said he was. <laughs> oh, I'll have to start without him. OK, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Kelpie Swim Club. For those of you who haven't been before, like Alison here, the first rule of Wild Swim Club is... Never talk about Wild Swim Club. <laughs> <laughs> Very funny, Ali. But seriously, nobody swims alone. 
So grab yourselves a partner if you haven't already, OK? Leave a message and I'll get back to you. Hi, Connor, it's me. I'm at the swim. You coming? OK, bye. Hi. Hi. Will you partner with me? Yeah. I'm a bit nervous. Oh. First time and all that. No, of course, of course. No worries. Oh, OK. I Perez, we have reached the conclusion that there is no evidence of misconduct against you. You are free to return to operational duties with immediate effect. Congratulations, D.I. Perez. The right decision. I look forward to working with you till the fiscal returns. God. I feel like such a fool. You don't have to tell us and it's happened to any of us. Well, don't let it put you off. Cold water exposure is actually really good for you. It's made a big difference to me. <laughs> Certainly got the endorphins going, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Pleasure. Thanks. There you go. Thanks. Uh, folks, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. Thank you all for coming along to the launch of The Wolver, a new graphic novel by Connor Cairns. Uh, it's a story steeped in Shetland myths and legends, uh, with a fair bit of gore thrown in for good measure. <laughs> but um, Connor is a great talent. A boy from Glasgow whose love for Shetland comes across in every page of this novel. I expect great things from Connor. I know he won't let me down. Congratulations, Connor. Congratulations, my wonderful boy. Thank you, Jimmy. Well done, bro. <laughs> Connor's dad not coming? No, he's working. He was desperate to come. Well, enjoy your drinks, and when you're drunk enough, come and buy a signed copy of the book. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Um, I just thought I'd, I'd drop round a wee gift. It's just to say thanks for all the... all the help you gave when my dad was ill. You didn't need to do that. It was my job. Yeah, I, I know that, but you didn't need to spend as much time with him as you did. And any, anyway, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's just it's a candle and a gift token. I love a candle. So, how did the tribunal go? It was today, yeah? Yeah, I'm, I'm back to work tomorrow. That's great news. 
you know, I know how stressed you've been. Listen, shall we go for that drink? Um, I mean, I've, I've, I've been meaning to ask you for ages. It's just that, you know, with everything no, that's going you've on... you've had a lot on your plate. We could give that fancy wine bar a go. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm proud of you. You know that. It's not going to top the New York Times bestseller list, though, is it? It's not the point. You did this. It's good. Okay, it's really good. <laughs> Will you sign my... Oh, uh, no, uh, later, no problem. What's up with him? He's never seen anyone kiss him before. Look, I'm gonna sneak out, cos I want to do a bit of drawing before the sun goes down, so... Well, I thought we could talk. We need to talk. Right, later. At your place. OK. The land is beginning to die, and the soil grows cold. So the earth continues its descent into night, and we mourn the days drawing shorter. Six months of light and six months of dark. The earth goes to sleep and later wakes again. Oh, dark mother. We honor you this night and dance in your shadows. We embrace that which is the darkness. Without the night, there is no day. Without death, there is no life. Great goddess of the night, I thank you. So, what were you doing in the hell so late? A ritual. Lighting a candle, that type of thing. For the equinox. Okay. And on the way back, this vehicle forced you off the road? Yeah, no doubt about it. It drove right at us. You think it was deliberate? Is that what you're saying? Couldn't have been anything else. Come on, I'll take you home. It's fine. I'm good at the halls. What are you doing? We should have stopped. Just thought those girls are all right. We never touched them. I think we should go home. You go if you want. I'm staying. to look sexy for own sausages, eh? Years of practice. <laughs> <laughs> Leave me alone, will you? One of the guests might think there's more in the menu than just black pudding. Sorry I missed the book launch. Oh, can't be helped. Go and see if the genius is up, will you? You're supposed to be giving me a hand this morning. Right. And you will give Abby a call, won't you? She got real fright last night. Aye. Sorry, everyone. He's not there. He probably stayed with Brett. Will you call her? 
Do you what? I'll change my shift. Give you a hand instead. How's that, huh? I'll do it then. Here we go, folks. Sorry about the delay. Hello? Hi, Brad. It's Rachel. <laughs> Is Connor with you? No. He was supposed to come over to my place last night, but he never showed. I tried calling him, but he hasn't got back to me. He's not with her. He'll pitch up. Hung over, no doubt. It was his book launch, after all. You want to take that chance after what happened? Rach, seriously, it's just way a wee bit. Hey, Billy, what's up? I'm just on my way in. I've got a concerned call from a Rachel Cairns, of the folk that took over the Nos Pew B&B on Bressy. The son, uh, Connor, he hasn't returned home. How old is he? He's 22. Two sugar. When was he last seen? Yesterday evening. A book launch at the Harbour Bar. Well, there must be a reason she's this worried. If there is, she didn't say. Although, I did notice... Her daughter was involved in an accident last night. But nothing serious. OK. We need to swap. It's OK, don't worry. Uh, all right, little girl. Will you be good for Daddy? <laughs> oh. morning. I thought you might need this on your first day back. Thank you very much. So, do you fancy a wee trip to Bressy? I'll fill you in on the way. Sure. So how was the tribunal? Over. I was worried you weren't coming back. Yep, me too. How about you? You getting any sleep these days? Well, a couple hours a night. Why do I look knackered? Considering you've been acting DI and you've got a newborn baby at home, you look as fresh as a daisy. Oh, thanks. I can tell when you're lying, by the way. I should probably work on them. Last year, Connor tried to take his own life. It was an overdose. <clears throat> Some girl he was keen on at uni was messing him about. But he, he's a different person now. He's got a new girlfriend, Bridge. He's been really good for him. She got him into wild swimming. Personally, I, I think we're panicking over nothing. So where is he, Danny? Um, Brett? She's a house parent at the Maury Bridge Halls. Y your daughter was involved in an accident last night, is that right? Yeah, it was nothing, just a reckless driver. It wasn't nothing, Danny. She could have been I seriously meant hurt. it's nothing to do with Connor. OK, so when was the last time you actually spoke to him? Last night at the book launch for his graphic novel. Jamie is publishing it for him. Jamie Neary? Yeah. Yeah. And before that, what was he doing? In the morning, he took his sister Abby to Lerick on his scooter. She stays at the halls during the week when she's at school. And then he went to the wild swim and then to the book launch. So he keeps busy then? Yeah. I is he on the vulnerable persons register? No, we... we didn't do that because he wasn't keen on people knowing. What about his laptop? Have you checked that? For what? If you're looking for a suicide note, there won't be one. Oh, my God! Oh. There might be an email explaining where he's gone. That's all. I don't have his password. Sorry. Could we have a look around his room? 
Yeah. Yeah, this way. The drawings are for his graphic novel. They're a story about a wolver. Yeah, that's right. Half man, half wolf. You know the legends? Yeah, well, my dad used to tell them to me. Ha, <laughs> well, Look, we know he's vulnerable, so if you give us his mobile phone number, and his social media accounts and a recent photograph, then we can try and track him down. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, but I, I have to ask, if we have to identify him in case of an accident, does he have any piercings, tattoos? No, no. But he does always wear a gold signet ring with the letter C on it that we gave him for his 18th. OK. What happened to your window? Uh, not sure. Uh, wind, maybe? It's brutal on this coast. If you were going somewhere, you'd take your laptop, wouldn't you? You would. His sister being run off the road is a bit of a weird coincidence. Do you notice the dad seems to know a lot about police procedure? I got a feeling that he didn't want us involved. Yeah. Let's run a background check on him. Morning. Who's that? Uh, PC Lorna Burns. She's been here a couple of months. Bloody time. Where have you been? God, are you still here? Good to have you back, sir. Thanks, Sandy. Uh, passenger manifests. No one by the name of Connor Cairns on any of them. Foot passenger? I'll check, but there was no sign of the scooter at either the port or the airport. Or of him from the CCTV in the town centre last night. Oh, Sandy, can I see the report from the accident that the sister was involved in last night? Yes, of course. I was thinking, maybe I should speak to Jamie Neary. He was supposed to meet Connor this morning. Yeah, that's a good idea. Look, let me sort this out and I'll meet you at the Maury Halls and then we can talk to the girlfriend. Jamie? Hiya. Can I have a quick word about Connor Cairns? Sure. I was just emailing him. Oh, as you know, his family are concerned. Um, when was the last time you heard from him? I saw him at the launch last night. It's not great timing, with this book coming out. Mm. Did he mention any plans? No, but he mentioned an ex on the mainland recently. Lynn, I think her name was. Do you think he could have gone to see her? Possibly. I'm lucky to work with him. He's such a talent. So were you surprised when Connor didn't show up last night? Of course. It's not like him. Did anything happen last night that might have made him disappear? Not really. He, he said he wanted to go and draw. Sometimes he likes to sleep out under the stars. He's had a fight with his dad, or if he wants to commune with nature. Does he not get on with his dad? Well, they argue a bit, but nothing major. Although, there was one thing that happened last night. Murray from the library, he was acting a little odd at the book launch. That's all I can think of. Is that Connor's wee sister over there? Yes. Do you mind if we have a word with her? No, of course. Thanks. We just wanted to ask you a few questions about your big brother. 
that okay? Sure. So how's he been lately? Is there anything worrying him? No. Brid was just saying that Connor likes to sleep out sometimes. Do you know where that is? No, I don't, sorry. But he's got a place that he likes his safe place, he calls it. I don't think he likes being in the B&B &B much. Sometimes he says he'd rather stay in halls with me. Is that because of trouble at home? No, it's just a joke. How's your wrist? You were involved in an accident? Yeah, I'm fine. You know, if there was anything that you wanted to tell us, you can phone DS McIntosh or me anytime you like. Nobody has to know. All right, then. You know he's dead, don't you? Why would you say a thing like that? I feel it. I don't know why, but... I just do. Right, and who might you be? Just a friend. Thanks for your help. There's definitely something not right about this. I'm not kidding. There's a like in there. We should head to the library. I've got to go. I'll let you know if I hear anything. Sure, absolutely. Hi, Murray. I'm DS McIntosh. This is D.I. Perez. We're checking on the whereabouts of Connor Cairns. I've just heard. Has nobody heard from him? Uh, not yet, no. Are you OK? Yeah, I'm, I'm just really worried that something awful's happened to him. I catastrophise about everything. How did the book launch go? Everything OK? Oh, really well, I think. Nothing odd happened? No tension between you and Connor? Ah, uh, no. Oh, that's his book there. Oh, have it, please. OK, well, thanks for your time. If you do think of anything, give us a call. It's possible that Connor Cairns has left Shetland of his own volition, but we can't be sure of that yet. There could be more at play here, so... This is a vulnerable young man. For the family's sake, let's find him. Do we have any more on the ex-girlfriend? Um, Lynn Henderson. They were on the same course at Glasgow University. Chemical engineering. OK, let's track her down and talk to her, find out if connor has been in contact. Um, Tosh, it would be good to see the background check on Danny Cairns and locate the scooter, because we can't rule out an accident yet. And finally, um, I don't want any of you to think for a moment that I missed you, but it is nice to be back. Take you for a comics guy. Ah, 
<laughs> That's just work. Um, hello. Hi. You look great. Thank you. Uh, what can I get you? Red wine, please. Excuse me. Uh, could I have another glass? Here you go. Thanks very much. So what's the comic got to do with work? Uh, um, we've got a missing person and he wrote it. It's a story about a man who conceals his identity and it turns out that he's a wolver, which is just, he's half man, half wolf. Yeah, I met a few of them in my time. I'm sure. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Sláinte. Cheers to you. Cheers. It was nice to finally get that drink. Yeah, yeah, it was. But I'm this way. Yeah, I'm, I'm up there. Okay. See you around. Okay. Okay. Good night. Good night. You been? Getting some air. Look, are you going to call the police about last night? Listen, we should talk to the guests first. Maybe it's some kind of joke. <laughs> or maybe not, Danny. See this? Danny Cairns is an ex cop. Convicted on corruption charges, served two years. to know exactly what you're involved in, and I need to know now. <clears throat> I was based in air, and I uh, stole drugs from a young drug dealer called Pepper Waldron. I was trying to put pressure on him to become an informant. It backfired. He was killed. Hit and run. Hit and run? That almost happened to your daughter. What's going on? Is it Connor? They know about me. I'm sorry, we should have said something. You think? You realise how much time you've wasted? <laughs> Is there anyone involved in what you've told us that has a grudge against you? <sighs> Pepper's family blamed me for his death. It was three years ago, they don't even know where we live. They could have found you easily. <sighs> Is there anything else that we need to know? Last night, somebody broke in and they stabbed all my kitchen knives into the counter and then they left. 
Okay. Let's have a look at the knives. Sandy, can you get me any members of Danny Cairn's old team in air? And get me the details of the death of a dealer called Pepper Waldron and any family members of interest. Yes, of course. Uh, look, I've, I've just spoken to Lynn Henderson, Connor's ex, but she says they only dated a few times. She says there was other stuff going on with him and the family just wanted someone to blame. Okay, then. I can't wait any longer. Rachel, go. We got something to the police. Please. So what made you come up here looking for him? Well, I've been thinking about his safe place, so I've been checking out parts of the island which he loves the most. I have to ask you, why did he need somewhere safe in the first place? For some peace and quiet. He's a sensitive soul. And I would appreciate it if you stopped the veiled accusations against my family and you just find my son! Tosh, seal off the area and get a forensics team up here. Boss? Lily, this is now a high-risk case. Get Connor's photograph out on the PNC with the usual notes and get his information out on social media. Okay. And then call the divers. I'm going to need them to take a look in the water up at Strong Ness Vole. The Flat Brothers boat's got a sounder. I'll ask Ali to get over there now. And warn them that, that they might find a body. OK. Sandy. So, I spoke to a DS at air station. He says that Danny's story about the informant is a lie. He stole drugs to sell them on and he didn't give a damn who got hurt. Danny is bad news. Locals arriving to search for Connor. I've tried to talk to him, but they're determined. So sorry to hear about your son. We're just visiting, but we'd like to help if we can. That's good of you, but I wouldn't want it to spoil your trip. So what do you think's happened to him? We're not sure. Look, thanks for the offer, but i got to go. Nicole, what are you doing? Just being a concerned citizen. This isn't right. It's got to stop now. No yet. Dad, come on. OK, it's going to be late for a few hours yet, so... Why do you go with them? I don't want to have to send a search party out for the search party. 
Does that sound OK? Absolutely. Who's that with Brad Fleming? I don't recognise him. I think he's staying at the guest house in Bessie. I don't why he'd leave the bike here. Maybe it broke down. Rachel. He's... Look, there's a chance that Connor might be hurt. So I think you should leave this to the others. Look, if he is out there hurt, then I want to be the one who finds him. Yeah, I know how you feel, but... No, you don't know how I feel. I haven't met before. I'm D.I. Perez. Lloyd Anderson. Are those some of Connor's drawings in there? That's right. I was giving him drawing lessons. Oh, how long did you work with him? A few months. We just need some pointers here and there. So you're an artist yourself, then? I am. I sort of make a living. So you're not going in the search, then? No? Don't misunderstand me. I praise a lie, but that's not how it usually plays out, is it? Or do you think he took his own life? I can't say, but Connor was... He was too sensitive for this world. He took on board all the bad stuff and couldn't switch off from it. It ate away at him. don't have time for this, Ali. What do you expect him to find? Just want to help if I can. Baby is far too beautiful to be yours. Come on. Huh? Hello. It's a long time no see. Yeah. Um, I can see you've been busy. It, <laughs> yeah, she's uh, keeping me on my toes. Aren't you, Louise? Well, it is a tonic to see you. Huh? You got time for another coffee? Yeah, I've got all the time in the world. Well, I'll give you that. Oh, thank you. Uh, that is mine. I <laughs> is going to do. Nobody should get away with what he did.
Vehicles registered to Cameron Waldron. I could have told you that. I recognised them. You're saying it's Pepper's family who did this. But do they have Connor? I don't know. Tosh. I found them. Arrest them. Let's go. Where's Connor? We know about your brother. And we have the knives from the Cairns kitchen, which I'm pretty sure are going to have your prints all over them. Pepper wasn't my brother. So what was Pepper to you? My cousin. You blame Danny Cairns for Pepper's death, but not the people who actually killed him? They wouldn't have touched him if it wasn't for Cairns. So this is the only justice I'm going to get. Are you saying that you've harmed Connor? That's your words, no mine. Is that Pepper? I get the feeling you probably told him a million times to try and sort himself out. Is that right? Nicole, I understand grief. You need a release. To lash out. Connor Cairns didn't cause your grief. So I'm going to ask you once again. Do you know where he is? Even if I did, I still wouldn't tell you. Your daughter's in very deep water. And if it turns out that Connor Cairns has been harmed, it's going to get an awful lot worse. We didn't come here to hurt anyone. Why did you come here? What you've got to understand is... Nicole loved Pepper like a brother. More than a brother, if I'm honest. They were so close. It wasn't healthy. Then after Pepper died, she became obsessed with Cairns. She did everything to track him down. But I swear, she didn't do anything to that boy. So his disappearance was a happy accident. And you then used that to taunt the family. <laughs> Aye. She just wanted them to suffer like she did. Abby and her friend, that was you, wasn't it? And the knives? Yeah. I just wanted to get my fright. That's all. What's your instinct, Tia Perez? You believe him? I do. So, this was about rubbing salt in the wounds of the Cairns family and nothing more? That's my call, yes. The preliminary forensic report on the camper van. No blood, no sign of a struggle. What do you want me to do with a pair of them? Release under investigative lib. Um, are you sure that's a good idea? That's my call, yes. It seems a risk to let them go now. What if they had an accomplice or they used a different vehicle to abduct him? I don't think they have him. I think we should be focusing on finding Connor. Get him off the aisles and get him out of my sight. Will do. Right. 
Is he going anyway? A any sign of Connor? Oh, honestly, I'd rather not talk about all that if that's okay. Actually, I, uh... I bumped into Carol Ann today, and she was saying that everyone at her work's got a theory about what happened to them. Carol Ann Manny? Hmm. Didn't you used to go out with her? Did I? I was... I was just... just for a couple of months. I thought it was longer. What, are you jealous? Oh, you think your man's still got it then, do you? I didn't say that. Uh. Maybe she's desperate. Oh. What makes you so keen to find her? If your son was missing, you'd want people to look for him. Ali, let's call it a night. Uh, we've wasted enough time on this. Just a bit longer. party down at the beach because it's the equinox, apparently. Um, I just wondered if you fancy coming for a bit. I don't know what. I'd, I'd love to, but I've got work to do. So take a break. I, I, I don't think I can. Okay. Sorry. No, it's, it's fine. It's... Here, look. I'll get it. Join us. Um, thanks. I'm meeting someone. Tea for two. I'm sorry for being a dick. <laughs> well, it's fine. You're here now. Cheers. Cheers to you. Listen, about earlier. When you used your work as an excuse not to come out with me, you mean? Is that what I did? It's okay. I get it. You're protecting yourself. You don't want to get hurt again. But just so you know, neither do I. Billy. Ali Sounder is picking up something on the bottom of Stromney's bow. They're bringing it up now. Okay. fish is here regularly. It's been recently dumped. It could be nothing, but we thought you should know. Oh, the day 
Sandy, keep them away from here. Alex, help him. Hey, stay back. Stop right there. Courage, you're not allowed any closer. This is a crime scene. You're not allowed any closer. Go home. Well, if it's not Connor, then who the hell is it? Good question. Back with Shetland next Wednesday night, same time, same place. For another drama beginning with S, full of twists, turns and a terrific cast, David Morrissey and Leslie Manville star in Sherwood. Watch right now on BBC iPlayer. <laughs>